major anxiety. How do we set ourselves up for major anxiety? We are setting ourselves up for a major a, 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 a panic attack. Let me just kind of explain this a little bit, the difference in them, okay? So look, here we go. I wrote a lot of words down so you can see it. I want you to see this. Uh, anxiety is an unpleasant state of inner turmoil, often accompanied by nervous behavior, such as pacing back and forth. Does it look like I'm anxious? <laughs> Amen. Uh, and, and it is subject, it's a subjectively unpleasant feeling of dread over anticipated events, such as the feeling of imminent death. Now, there's a difference in what you see. Well, says there's a difference in fear and anxiety. The reason is, anxiety is not the same as fear, which is the response to a real or perceived immediate threat. So, so, whereas anxiety is the expectation of a future threat. When I'm afraid there's something real or imagined right in front of me, anxiety is when I'm expecting it. There is a difference. And so there's a lot of people don't realize just how much they have this. So let me tell you this right now. You can hide for a while. You can hide your anxiety. It takes somebody who really knows you or somebody who knows what anxiety looks like to pick out sometimes when we're under anxiety. But you cannot hide an anxiety or a panic attack. There's a difference. You can hide anxiety for a while, and even sometimes while it's getting up, you can hold it down until it gets to a certain level, and then it begins to go back down, and you're fine. But you cannot, cannot hide when it becomes a panic attack. Matter of fact, I, I've, seen, I've seen people be, be called 911. They come in and get them thinking they're having a heart attack. And when they get them, they check their, their signs, they check their symptoms, they put them in the back of the rescue squad, they start giving them oxygen, they get them to the hospital, they say, you know what, there's nothing wrong with their heart. The problem is they're having an anxiety attack, a panic attack. I've seen it more than one time. I've even seen it in my own family when things were going down. I see somebody starting to have that panic attack, and I start talking with them. Yesterday, I saw somebody, again, not even where you wouldn't even expect it, where my family just where you would not even expect it, all of a sudden there's a panic attack. See, see, anxiety creates panic. Remember, anxiety is I feel it's coming, and I feel it coming, I feel it coming, I feel it coming. But panic comes when you go, but I don't know what to do about it. And all of a sudden you start thinking, saying things like, I've let everybody down, I've let myself down. I, I, I can't believe I've done this. I can't believe this is where it's going. I can't believe I'm in this position. And pretty soon you're talking so fast and you're breathing so hard that you hyperventilate and your chest starts hurting and you start blacking out. All kinds of things when you have these panic attacks. So it's very important that we understand what the difference is. So, so, so it creates panic, and panic always attacks. It'll attack you in more ways than you ever could imagine. So, so now we're going to talk about a biblical example. <clears throat> okay, we're going to read this scripture, and then we're going to, uh, you can remain seated, we're going to read the scripture, we're going to pray, and then we're going to talk about somebody that had anxiety, and God stopped it before it became a panic attack. All right? He had anxiety. And God stopped it before it became a panic attack. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 1. You got your Bible saying again. You don't say on me. <clears throat> now after the death of Moses, verse 1. The servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Moses, his minister, saying, Moses... My servant is dead. Say the past is behind us. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, and all these people, and to the land which I give to you, even to the children of Israel, the future is ahead of us. Every place that the soil your foot shall tread upon, I have given it you as I said unto Moses. For God is with us, and nothing shall be impossible. From the wilderness of the Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the high tribes, and to the great sea, for the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses. So will I be with thee, I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, 
For unto this people you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Let's, let's pray. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, God, that you know where we live. You've got our address. You know what each of us are going through. And God, you know how to take one message amongst 50 people and cater each person's message directly to them. Although the same message is being spoke to all, each person can hear it individually. I'm asking you to do that again today, Lord. Although some message coming from my mouth, I believe inspired by you, let it divide up and go to each person individually and let it speak to them on their level, wherever they're at at this moment, and minister in a very powerful, powerful way. In the name of Jesus, we love you, and we praise your name, and we thank you for it. Let me just pray in church said, Amen. 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 Now, if there was every person, <laughs> Joshua, y'all say Joshua. Joshua. Okay. You know, Joshua was the Hebrew for Jesus, right? Don't do that. So, 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 Joshua is, is, is Jesus, all right? So here's Joshua. Joshua. If every person was set up for a panic attack, it was Joshua. Can you imagine? It's hard enough for certain people, you know, I hear people say when they come up to, to uh, minister or they come up to talk behind somebody else, they say, you expect me to come up behind that talk? Have y'all ever said that? You expect me to go behind this? And do something. You know, DC always said, you still need to go behind my daughter. You know, uh, matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to bed at 3 o'clock. Uh, uh, DC's not here today because he's, he's actually got a migraine and throwing up. But I'm going to this uh, this, this uh, Mama Mia at Washington High School. And, and Sierra's got the lead role in Mama Mia. She's singing Mama Mia. There we go again. Okay, they didn't ask me to sing there. I'm telling you, I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's because I'm too old to be in high school. That's got to be it. <laughs> All right. If there was ever, so did she give her her? I don't want to sing behind her, Dad. I said it's your daughter. You told her how to sing. Don't worry about it. All right. If ever there was a person in position for panic attacks, it was Joshua. Watch this. Now, can you imagine this happening to you right now? Watch. He was called to take Moses' place. Wow. That's a big shoes. Moses to everybody was God's voice speaking directly to them. He was the man in between them and God. He was the one that saw God, spoke to him face to face. He was there. He's up in the mountain. He got the commandments. He saw, all, saw the plagues in Egypt and the Red Sea. And now all this stuff's going on. And now Moses is dead. And now God's calling Joshua. He says, Joshua, I want you take his place. I would not want to be in that position. No. Don't put me there. So I can imagine that already that was anxious enough. You got big shoes to fill. But now, not only big, big shoes to fill, but I want you to take the land. So now look at this. Now he's got this big job to complete. Now how many in here think about this? You know, uh, how many got big jobs at your job or in your family? You got big jobs that you need to complete. And just thinking about that, you know, if, if everything's on schedule, everything's going right, you feel pretty good about it. You still feel anxious, but that's a normal anxious. It's a good anxious. It keeps you moving. It keeps you on schedule. But then you get behind schedule, and you get behind schedule, and other things are thrown on you. All of a sudden, now, oh God, you know, you're thinking, when am I going to have time to do this, 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 and this? You know, uh, yesterday I was in a mass meeting from from nine thirty to five. Uh, while I was sitting there, whenever I had a little bit of time, I was busy writing a 12 or 10 page essay uh, for school tomorrow. I was busy writing a sermon, and I was, I was also writing Tuesday night's Bible study. Because I know that if I wait till the last minute, something always happens at the last minute, and I can't get it done. So, so there I was writing all those. At the same time, I was talking, and I was praying for folks and doing communion and doing everything else, but I was just, just keeping it going because I know just getting behind how much stress. That puts on a person. Oh, yeah. And I sent off four 100 word or less essays while I was over there. So just, just constantly. I know I got to keep it going because if I don't, you get, get behind just a least little bit. All of a sudden, anxious. You get anxious and anxious and anxious. And so, 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 so watch this. Look, God gave me big shoes to fill. God gave a big job to complete. 
And both seemed impossible without God. Y'all say without God, it's impossible. Can you imagine Joshua trying to get all these people without God's help? After seeing all those things Moses did, and now here he goes, and here he goes, get ready. I'm going to take his first verse, the first few verses, and I'm going to show you how he set up for anxiety. And set up, set up for an anxiety or a panic attack, but God stopped it. And, the mo and Joshua moved on anyway, and God took care of him. Some of us is right where we're at today. This right here, right now, I'm going to get ready to show you. I may be parking right in your backyard. Some of y'all are parking in your front yard. Ready? Get ready. Anxiety. Anxiety is triggered many ways. I mean many ways, but I'm going to show you just a few right here in the scripture. When your past triggers negative feelings. How many have things in your past that you really don't like? That you really wish hadn't happened? That you wish you had responded differently? That you wish you would have got a better handle on it. Now you can say, half the day I can handle it, but back then I just didn't know. Sometimes a reminder of a difficult past triggers anxious emotions. I was, uh, just to, like you know, right recently, because uh, it's, it's fresh in my mind, uh, Bethany, it's just constant. There's always something happening and something triggers. I looked up on the refrigerator that I hadn't even paid attention to it. Bethany needed $10 for something. And I put $10 on the refrigerator with the magnet. Said, here, get it when you need it. Well, she's been there since November 17th. And I have to look up on the refrigerator up at the top. Guess what I saw? That $10 bill with that magnet. And I said, well, where you going? Your ticket's already pushed. <laughs> you know, I had to get funny about it because I had to start with it. It hurt my heart. And I went inside the refrigerator. And when I went inside the refrigerator, I thought I'd taken all of her drugs and carried them to the sheriff's office and the chemotherapy and all that and had it incinerated. But I go back in the refrigerator and I go way on back in the bag to get something and I see a plastic bag. I said, uh oh. And I pull out a plastic bag and says, do not handle it. It was chemotherapy. So here it is again. Just in. So that stuff happens. All of a sudden, I find myself kind of sinking. And so I find myself kind of sinking. I find a way to get myself out of it is by saying, God, she's with you. Thank you. Thank you, she's not hurting anymore. Thank you, God, she's at perfect peace. And uh, thank you, God, that she don't have to take this stuff anymore. And so, so I've learned how to cope. Don't say necessarily just get over it, but cope. You know what I'm saying? So here it is. You can't change your past, but you can change how you respond to it. Joshua 1 and 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. He was stopped. Part of it, he was in mourning, and so he was going to be still because it's mourning. But the other part is, not only is he in mourning, but he's afraid to move forward. Think about it. How many times have you been in a situation? Can you Moses! I mean, the man, the myth, the legend, all in one. Moses is dead. Now, you get up, Joshua. It's your turn. No, I'd rather stay here. I was, I was hearing somebody talk about a preacher, and I didn't really get it to start with, and then I, then I, then I did kind of get it. It said, uh, back, in the, back in the day when they had the midwives and all going on, a little boy, there was two children, a, a set of twins being born, and, and, and one uh, came out, sort of breached, came out, and the arm came out first. So, so she tied a ribbon on his wrist to kind of help pull on this baby arm. And when she tied the ribbon on the baby's arm, the baby immediately pulled his arm right back in the womb. And then the other twin was born. And the moment the ribbon came out last. And, and, and the preacher even said, he said, see, some people, when they see a breakthrough coming, they'd rather stay in captivity. And the others go on out. I don't want to stay in captivity. I don't want to stay in something that keeps me bonded and keeps me down. So watch, watch. So, so just remembering the past feelings can cause anxiety to trigger in you. And then sometimes, and this is how he felt, you feel unprepared. Joshua chapter 2, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people. Really? They wouldn't listen to you, Moses. Why didn't they listen to me? You had a hard enough time with them and you were working on these miracles. You had your rod. You were awesome. I'm a warrior. I'm having to fight my way.
way through with my sword, and, and now I've got to leave all these people. I'm not prepared for this, God. I really can't do this. Some of y'all are thinking that right now. You're thinking of something in your life. It's hitting you hard. You know what? You're right, God. That's how I feel. And watch this. When you feel out of control, the future's unknown, change is scary. You may feel out of control. Again, Joshua 1, chapter 2. Now, you go to destroy all these people into the land. Okay? That land's got giants. That land's got strong, walled cities. Matter of fact, up to this point, we're not even sure what all it's got. And Joshua hadn't even seen the spies yet. It's scary. Because I don't know what waits out there. And so like a little baby with the, with the ribbon tied around his wrist, I just climb on back in the womb. It's tight, but at least it's warm. It's tight, and I can't move, but at least I know what to expect. Out there, I have no idea what to expect. That's why a lot of people, when they're being abused, a lot of people, when they're going through bad situations, they keep going back to the familiar. It's because that's exactly what they're doing. They know that it's bad, but at least they know what they've got. And if they go out there, they've got to go to the unknown, and they're scared to go to the unknown because they're not sure what they're going to find when they get out there. So I just go back into the where I know I might get hit or I might get abused, but at least I know what's going to happen, and I can handle that. I prepare myself for that. And God's saying, no, we got to move forward. Yesterday's mighty army said, don't ask God to bless your steps if you're not willing to take one, or bless your path if you're not going to take a step. And you've got to move. And then anxiety is triggered when you feel you have no explanation. Sometimes there's no warning or explanation to your anxiety. Just anxiety speaks false beliefs to us. And when these false beliefs start coming, we get paralyzed. I've let everybody down. I've let myself down. I've let God down. I've told you this a million times. I'm going to say it again. You might have let me down. You might have let your friends down or you down. But you cannot let God down. You never just Listen to me. You cannot disappoint God. It's impossible. Why can you not disappoint God? Because in order to disappoint somebody, you've got to do something other than what they, what they expect. I can tell God all day long that I'm going to do whatever, but he already knows what I'm going to do, so how can I disappoint him? Can't disappoint him. It's impossible. If you tell me that you're going to give me, give me, uh, you're going to have a whatever, a, 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 a Dodge Charger waiting right there for me with my name on it. I walk out, I don't see it, that'll be disappointing. But you know what? <laughs> you know what? God already knew that he's not disappointed. He's going, he going, wait till you go out there, son. <laughs> they ain't going to be no Dodge Charger. They play the trick on you. They got a Mustang. I just want to put Mustang's in the universal car. Let me change that. Mustang's universal. It's not even counted as a Ford. Mustang is the car. Amen. That's right. That's right. Mustang and Charger. Two of the toughest cars on the market. All right. So then, after anxiety is triggered, watch this. Hello, my name is Failure. This is anxiety talking to you. Anxiety is trying to tell you you're a failure. Anxiety tries to tell you that you can't make it work. It will say you tried and it didn't work. You're nothing but a failure. You failed God, you failed whoever, you failed your family, you failed yourself. And anxiety puts that name tag on you. Failure. You see, here, here, here's, here's, here's the anxiety, how, how it attacks. Watch this now. Here, look for there, There's the danger of looking back. He said, again, here, bring it back to the scriptures. Most of my servants did, now therefore rise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people to the land. Now watch this now. Watch this. Watch carefully. In the first nine verses, Moses is mentioned six times. The rest of the book, he's mentioned 57 times. I was talking to a preacher one day, and the preacher told me, said, you know, uh, I, they called me to another church, and I went to another church, and I said, well, how's your wife like it? He said, well, I thought she was going to like it, but I'm not sure anymore. And I said, why? He said, because I went there after the pastor died. I said, well, that can't be cool. He says, yeah, but the problem is, his wife's still living, and she's still there. And he says, so I'm the pastor because I know he's dead, but he said, my wife's not the pastor's wife. She's my wife, but... They still go to her, the other lady. 
And since I'm a pastor, I mean, my wife kind of feels like she's not even needed. And I thought about this. Fifty-seven times Moses. Moses. Joshua, the book of Joshua, about him. Joshua. But every time Joshua was trying to do something, we hear about Moses. Isn't that great? Y'all got to hear about somebody else that's, that you think is greater than you. You're trying to do something, but all you hear is somebody else all the time. So, so, watch this. There is that danger of looking back. And then, look, look, look. It's easy to look at what God has done in the past and think, I can't move forward. That's a lie. A lie. Then there's the danger of standing still. He says in verse 3, he's trying to tell him to get up. You've got to get up. you got to get moving. Every place the sole of your foot will tread, I have given you. Now, now, fulfilling the promises of God, God will fulfill it, but we've got to do our part. What's our part? We've got to walk by faith. Then, then, watch this. Then, I love this. I love this. Have you ever had one of those days when you're holding a stick and everybody looks like a pinata? <laughs> yeah. You, Pastor? Yeah. Especially if they got a lip tied to their name. And especially if I gave birth to them. Well, I gave birth to them. I was there when they were born. Amen. All right. So now. So now. Watch this. Watch this. Some more dangers. There's the danger of giving up. No man should be able to stand before you all days of your life as I was with Moses. I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Meaning I will not leave you emotionally. And I will not leave you physically. I'm going to be with you. You can trust me. You see, here it is. Hey, he's wanting to give up already. He's right here. This is all going on. This one conversation. God has found everything in this one conversation. And then there's the danger of falling short. Because it says, be good, be strong with good courage. For this people you shall divide and inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. The inheritance is the land that God so in other words, you got to sometimes you just got to move forward, even if you can't see what's in front of you. You still have to move forward and trust God. Anxiety will be there all the way. So now we're just going to talk about one more slide, and then we're going to we're going to pray, and we'll talk about the rest next week. This has just been the buildup, okay? So now, now watch this. Anxiety does not exist in the back end. It not only affects you, but it impacts all your relationships. I've noticed over the years, if I'm around, some people are just anxious people. You ever know any anxious people? I mean, it's like talking to a chihuahua, a human chihuahua. I mean, everything, everything. You know, I can just imagine Don Knox walking up and down here, you know. My brother, who is one of the calmest, coolest dudes I've ever met. I, after he grew up, now when he was, when he was young, and I, 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 I think I had to wind up beating him, but finally he got to be cool and calm. He's my younger brother. One day, I'm in the barn, in Danny's barn, and Danny has one, two, three sections. I'm in the middle section. The back door is right here, but it, was, it wasn't open because I went in through this side. So I had to come through a door, had to come through another door, and then I'm getting ready to reach up for something when I do this big old snake. The tail, I kid you not, the tail was that long. And it was hanging up over the work area. And so I said, this is nothing. I'll just yank him and throw him down. I don't want him to look right here while I'm working. And so I grabbed him by his tail, and I went to yank, and I went to yank, he yanked back. And I said, this ain't how this is going down, bro. So I yanked again, and he yanked back. I said, well, good Lord, he can't be but two foot long. Why's he got somebody holding his hands? And I yanked one more time. When I did, a head from way over down there came out. And he looked at me, and I understood every word he said. <laughs> He said, let me go. Are you in 
trouble. Boy. <laughs> and I'm holding the tail and his head's coming out here. And my brother, Dr. Cool, <laughs> opened up. He was going to help me work, right? He goes and opens up the door and steps in. He sees this going on. I got this tail. It's hanging down this far, down from me. And this, that, this thing had to be, it was a rat snake. It had to be, uh, it had to be five foot long. I pulled over here, down here, and that head's coming down. And when my brother comes in, he, the snake was looking at me and looks at, looks at my brother goes, and what are you going to do? <laughs> my brother understood that too. <laughs> and my Dr. Cool brother, who never loses cool, was going, he honestly, he looked like, he looked like Don Knotts. He just went. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Larry, help me. He goes, I said, do something. I pull on the snake and say, shh. And he's going, I said, calm down, son, do something. Open the door behind me. He goes, he goes, okay. And he runs through the door he came in and runs all the way to the other side and opened up the top door. Way down the other side, I'm going to pull him out. I'm going to walk through this door, through that door, and go in the section and throw him out over there. I mean, right behind me. It's like he's throwing him out. But I had to take him and, and put my arm around him <laughs> and tow him out. And so my brother's way on the other side going, okay, kick it, he's ready. And so the snake said, if you had enough, I said, yes, I'll let go. And he disappeared. Anybody with the right trigger can have an anxiety attack. Just hope it's not your brother when you're holding the tail of the snake. Waiting for him to open the door. Because <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Amen. He lost all his cool points that day. James Dean started looking like Pee Wee Herman after that. Okay. So, so, look. Anxiety does not exist in the vacuum. It only affects you, but it affects, it, 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 matter of fact, infects. Not only affects, it infects. What I was going to say is, if you ever notice people are always kind of jumpy, if you watch them strong enough, usually, if you can go back and see their parents or their grandparents or somebody they considered their parental figure, you're liable to see one of two things. Either one, they, that person that was in the parental position can never be satisfied, ever. And was always jumping on them. Or number two, they're just shaky like that too. Either way, this stuff gets passed down, gets passed down, gets passed down. And so you got to stop it. So here it is. This is just the first one. we got a bunch more coming next week. It is good stuff. Okay. Joshua 1 8. The book of the law. He's doing all the stuff you got to do. He's... I mean, there's all these things can be going on in his head. <clears throat> the Bible won't just plain out say he's having an anxiety attack, but you know there's anxiety there because he keeps trying to talk to him. He's talking to him. He's coaching him. He's, he's, he's moving him forward. He's trying to get him to get up and move forward. And so, so here it is. <clears throat> he says, The book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe it according to all that is written therein. For then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. And all I I want you to listen carefully because this is going to help you. This is your assignment for this week. And this also is kind of leading up to after, we're going to, after, it's after Easter now because it's so close to Easter. After Easter, we're going to start the stuff over here and we're going to try to start the stuff over there after Easter and after Emmaus. We're going to start it. So we're going to start advertising it so people can come. But even the stuff we're doing on Tuesday nights now, the prelude has been awesome and 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 uh, hearing that people are feeling better and, and starting uh, this week we're going to talk about being how to get beyond perfectionism because perfectionism is one of the major causes of anxiety in a person's life is being a perfectionist. Remember, God's called us to be excellent. He's not called us to be perfect. Okay? Everybody's going to make mistakes. Amen? Matter of fact, I think it would help if we could lighten up on some of our people in our relationships and say, wait a minute. God didn't expect perfection. Why should I? Okay, so the verse is the power of meditation. Meditation, he said, I want you to meditate on it day and night. It means to utter under your breath, to talk to yourself. So, everybody in this room talks to yourself every day. 
matter of fact, you're talking to yourself as soon as I start talking. Some of you, look, it's some of you, but I didn't say this, I said you talk to yourself. Some of y'all said, no, I don't. <laughs> you just talk to yourself. I don't talk to myself every day. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> we all talk to ourselves. The biggest conversation you have every day is the one in your head. Okay? Every last one of us. When we're, when we're trying to figure out something, well, how's it supposed to work? In your head, you're thinking, well, how's it supposed to work? Wait a minute, last time I did it, I went this way, and now I'm going to have to do this way, or the things have changed, and you just go on down the line, and, 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 and you're talking to yourself, and then you say, look, you mess up, and you go to yourself, that's stupid. Well, you know what? And then you go from that stupid to, you know what? I think you're just stupid. And then, from then you're just stupid to, you can't do anything anywhere else while you're here. And you're talking to yourself and you're going further and further and digging the hole deeper and deeper. And anxiety starting to dig in and dig in hard. You know, and like I told you just a few weeks ago when we were doing Never Lies, uh, I'll tell it again. I, I, I was, I was, uh, Linda started watching this show, Big Daddy, with Adam Salmon. He's trying to foster this boy. And all of a sudden, some of that stuff got so real with the stuff I had when I was fostering Bethany and how we had to adapt and adopt when we, when we, when we got her. And, and all the stuff she had been through when she first got her when she first got her first toys, she destroyed her dolls because when she got her dolls, she beat her dolls. She beat them, just tore them up. And why? Because that was her life up until she came to us. And so we had to teach her how to love her dolls and not beat them, and how to you know, just some all this stuff was going on. Well, watch your big daddy. I started thinking about Bethany, and I started getting still laughing. I started getting tears in my eyes, so I got up and I said, you know what, I'll just give you some water. As I walk in, I look in the chair that Bethany always sat in, and that teddy bear that was sitting here in the funeral is sitting in that chair. That's what's been there since the funeral. And the teddy bear was leaned over, just like Bethany would lean over. She weren't feeling good. And then I walked to see with Bethany. I went, here we go. I thought I'd in for relief, and now I'm seeing Bethany again. So I turned my head just quickly, and I look right at her urn. And I go, okay, there's nowhere to escape this. And so I go in the kitchen to get water. When I go in the kitchen to get water, the enemy starts talking to me and goes, you know, if you'd have been a better daddy, she would still be alive. If you'd have got, if you'd called her time enough, if you'd have seen the signs better, she would have had a better chance. And went on and on and on and on and on. And I was preaching on leaving Neverland the next day. And I said, you know what? Say, you're trying to get me to rent a room in Neverland, and I'm not going to do it. I said, I did okay by her. I did what I thought was right by her. I thought I was being led by God. I did what I was supposed to do. I'm not going to accept these lies, these never lies. And I went right back in, took some water, or right back in and sat down and started watching that movie and just laugh and laugh and laugh. So I'm not going to live that way. But this anxiety and always, he could have done better. Could have, could have, could have, could have, could have, should have, would have. See, watch. Healthy talk builds faith. And what's the best way to talk healthy talk? Talk about the Word. I've discovered over the years, whatever I'm having a problem with, I'll go to the Word, and I'll find the remedy in the Word, and then I talk it over my head all the time. I just keep talking over my head. And there's even times, you know, call me crazy, but there's times I like to think about I'm standing right there, and I'm watching Joshua. When he goes and he stands, he, he stands before uh, Jericho and just before he goes trying to figure it out and all of a sudden the Lord appears to him like a soldier with a sword and says take your shoes off your feet because where you stand is holy ground. I sit there and think about that and go wow. You know that's some awesome stuff. And I'm sitting here being caught up in the never lies and I can be thinking about that awesome awesome stuff that's happening. You know God never God never shielded people from all their problems. He was with them in his problems. He led them with their problems. Didn't take them all away. Good Lord, if he took them all away, then we wouldn't stand a chance. You look in the Bible, everywhere you see in the Bible, every one of God's powerful men, all of them, had to overcome some great stuff. So, now here, here, watch this. Now, this was a mighty army, sort of, uh, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a couple of months ago. Worry is reverse meditation. Worry. Well, this is not going to work. What if I had a, what if shoulda, coulda, woulda? Man, this is not going to work. What if they don't want to talk to me? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? I can't remember 
where we're at. Maybe it's here at church. I don't know. But somebody said something about, or somebody said, maybe it's Tuesday night. I'm not sure. Or somebody said, somebody said, uh, uh, why the for if only? And I spoke up and said, yeah, yeah, bullfrogs had wings and put them up behind you every time they hopped. If, if only, if only, if only. We can't live in that if only. Worry. So that's reverse, that's reverse meditation. Now you're just talking, you're just talking crazy to yourself. And then watch this. After you get through talking that crazy mess all day long in your head, your name tag changes to anxiety. You know, I don't want my name to be anxiety. How about you? I don't want, I don't want to know that when people see me, they see anxious. When they see me, they think, well, you know, that guy's so full of anxiety. I'm not sure we can talk to him. No, 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 no. I've even had people tell me, you know, uh, just recently, we know what you've been through, and, and, and we don't want to burden you with our problems. And I go, look, I'm a pastor, and God's given me something to buffer where I can listen to your problems, and I don't take them on to myself. I can listen, and I can help you with your problems, and I don't have to... Be, be down and out over Bethany. I'll just keep on moving forward because I know how to compartmentalize. I put Bethany right here and put you right there. Don't think because of what happened to Bethany, I can't pastor now. I'm still not thinking good, but that's okay because I want sure I was thinking good to start with. <laughs> okay. But Bethany used to ride with me. She'd say, turn here, Dad. Turn here, Dad. Turn here, Dad. And then she would do things like, but there we go. So she goes, okay, Dad, we got to go now. I go, well, we got to, she said, no, Dad, you said you'd be there such and such. We got to go. And I don't have that. I've turned, it, I've turned more wrong roads. I've had to turn around so many times. I've had so much stuff because I didn't have a little handler there to, to handle me. Amen. She did a good job of that. Hello, my name is Anxiety. Yesterday, I had ordered another one of those watches. You know, because this here is a wonderful watch, but it'll last like eight hours. You got to recharge it. So, so this is a good watch if you're going to play. So if you're going to go overnight somewhere, forget it. Unless you've got your charger with you. Because it's only like eight hours. So I was trying to find a little secondary cheap watch I could wear, like to Emmaus or wherever, where I can still get my text messages on the watch and all this. Well, the first one I ordered, the, the, the instructions were in Chinese. <coughs> And so I kept playing with it and kept playing with it. And finally, it said, if you want English, push here. So I pushed here. And so then it said, you're crazy by this watch. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a watch, no good. So the second watch says, number one seller on Amazon. I'll buy the thing and it's in Chinese. So I'm telling you, I don't, I don't know if I trust all those if all these Everybody likes these. So I finally bought one yesterday. I finally come in, a little cheapy, and I said, you know what, this will be awesome. This, uh, this works. It says it's, you know, people said they like it. And I put it in my watch, and I put it in my phone, and I put it in my phone. It was, everything was working just like it said, but then wow. my, 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 my uh, spyware detector popped up and said, you got mail, you got, uh, 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 I can't even think of what it's called now. Uh, but but you, you, you're going to affect your phone if you don't get rid of this malware. And I said, but this says it. But I was looking at the phone and I said, but Amazon said, and it didn't change. It said malware. So I tried to flip it off. Said it's okay. We'll accept this. And it kept popping up. No malware. You're going to mess up your phone. So so here it is. So I downloaded, uploaded, and downloaded three times. And it still was doing the same. So then I come across this. <laughs> I decided to install that anxiety in that phone. And some of you need to install that anxiety in your heart, in your mind. Because you're living something that's not even there. You're, you're scared of something that's not even going to happen or may not happen. You got something in your mind thinking, you know, all this stuff, all these bad things you're thinking of. And like I told you, I told y'all about this. When I was working at Fountain, we had this big old ISO 9000. Y'all heard of ISO 9000? 
It's a big thing that talks about how things are built, and they're all built by specifications. They're always the same. Everything built is the same thing because of these specifications. And the company would spend hundreds, company would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on ISO 9000. And my job was to make sure that ISO 9000 was in compliance with the major ISO 9000 company in New York. And so my, my first wife was very sick during all this preparation for this audit. And just before the audit came, she died. My head was not in the game. And then, instead of sending good old boys down here, they sent two auditors. One had just altered into space shuttle after it exploded. The new space shuttle was after that one. And the other one wrote the book. And they wrote me up so bad, they had to have two notebooks. We failed. First time ever in Fountain's history, they failed. I said 9,000. I walked up to the COO, Mr. Fountain, and I just knew they were going to fire me. I knew, I've seen stuff like that happen. So there was anxious. I'm thinking, I lost my wife, trying to take care of my daughter, my boys are going crazy, and, and, and now I've failed this, I'm losing my job. And so all the way when they called me to office, I can think about, I'm losing my job, I'm losing my job, I'm losing my job, I'm losing my job. I was already thinking about calling somebody and getting other jobs before I even got to the office, so I was making that long walk. That long walk was about 10 miles, I felt like. I'm losing my job, I'm losing my job, I'm losing my job. So I kept hearing, you, you, man, you blew it, you blew it, you had your head in the game, bop, 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 bop. And I couldn't think. And so when I got in there, the COO said, David, you realize this is the worst audit we've ever had? I said, yes, sir, I realize that. He says, and I want to say something to you, and I'll play what I'm going to say, you're fired. And he put out his hand and said, I want to tell you I'm sorry. He said, you were going through so much, and I didn't try to help you. I didn't send you any help, didn't try to help you. I just know how you normally get things done. I just thought you could, you could. I said, he said, I thought it would be fine. I said, I'm inside, I'm still waiting for the fire. He said, and I want you to know we're sorry. He said, but the cool thing is, they're going to do it again in like 30, 40 days. He said, we're going to do it again. We get a chance, another chance at it. He said, you'll do better next time. Still didn't send me any help. Listen to fire. Yeah. And I remember about three weeks or four weeks later, I'm walking upstairs to the engineer, and my mind popped back in here. I felt it. I literally felt it pop back in here. I ran to the vice president engineer. <clears throat> he's the one who told me I was going to get fired. <laughs> I ran to the vice president engineer. And I said, uh, hey, dude, my mind just woke up. I actually couldn't think again. You know, I felt like a scarecrow in the Wizard of Oz when I gave him that diploma. <laughs> you know, and, and, and he said, well, he said, it's about time. He said, because we got another audit coming. He said, if you miss this enough, you will be fired. I said, don't worry about it. God's got, I didn't say God's got this because that's Beth in the same. But I said something like that. God's got this. And I get to the next audit, and it was the best one we had ever, ever had. Ever. They were so impressed with how great everything was, and we passed so fast. It didn't even take before it took three days to do it. It took until like a day and a half. Everything was in order. Everything was right. They said it's the best audit. But Mr. Fountain, well, they were, were impressed because it was the best audit they'd ever had. And all I could think about was all that anxiety I had built up inside was needless and worthless. We need to download, install the anxiety in our hearts and our minds because it messes us up. It deteriorates our faith. We cannot do what we've got to do. I look out here and I think about, I've seen this church full. I've seen this church when it goes through the spells. It's one of those spells that goes through every now and then. This is one of them. And so I look at that. I don't, think, I don't think about the snapshot. I think about the history. And when I see the history, we've seen this before. It's not like this is the first time this has ever happened. It's happened several times, and all churches go through it. It's just some churches have so many people that you can't really tell when they're going through it. And some, they're so big that when they go through it, they're almost supposed to shut the place down because they can't handle it. But again, you read a snapshot and look at the history, and you'll feel better.
I was going to say this, so don't get anxious over that. Think about your own life and the things you're going through with your family. You're thinking, take a snapshot and go, oh man, look at this, we'll never get over this. Look at your history, look back and say, you know what, we've had stuff like this before. God help us then, he's going to help us now. Get rid of your little Polaroid snapshot and get out your recorder and look at your history and know that God has got this and he's got us and everything's going to be okay. It's going to be, listen, I'm telling you, we're on the move if we'll trust God and get anxious about everything and start <laughs> I can think about her, I think about that, I think about my brother in that barn. But that's the thing. I mean, I've never seen him like that ever. And he's <laughs> ever, you know, stop being so, be anxious about nothing is what the Bible says in Philippians. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by praise and by prayer. You give thanks to God. Pray to God. You can give him thanks and watch what he'll do. Everybody stand. Uh, Brandy, come on up. I mean, uh, uh, BJ, come on up here.
to speak it. I'm going to speak it. God's saying, I'm going to speak your word. But thou shalt meditate there in day and night. God, I will think about you day and night. Working, not working. Y'all say it with me. Working, not working. When I'm laying in bed, I will think about your word. That thou mayest observe the according to all written. God, I will obey your word. Say that. God, I will obey your word. You promised to make my way prosperous. I claim that promise. Say that. I claim that promise. In the name of Jesus. Ready? We're going to say one more prayer. And then we'll open the altars. I want everybody to say this. You say, we say this all the time. It's okay to say it all the time. Don't you say, when you go to eat your meal, don't you say the blessing before your meal each time? When you do that at night, don't you pray before you go to sleep? Hopefully you do. When you get up in the morning, don't you pray? And we're going to say this prayer. We can say it every service and it won't hurt a thing. Father, you'll say it with me, Father. I need you. I need you. In my life. More than ever. I need you to calm the seas that are raging in my soul. I need you to boost my faith and help me to stand. I rededicate my life to you this day. I'm yours. You're mine. And I'm holding on to it in the name of Jesus. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. Give a praise. Now, anybody has any other needs, the altars are open. We're not going to close down the service. I have an altar so I know you've been you've already prayed, you've already had your prayers answered, but if you have another need, the altars are open.